what up gang welcome back to another video it's your girl shanika and i'm back with another histology video for you guys it's been a minute y'all i have a lengthy h and e troubleshooting video for you guys today so make sure you get your frida carson book and i'll be posting a lot of pictures in this video i may not get to any histology questions today because uh, I just want to focus on the H&E chapter for you guys so we can go ahead and start doing some other fun things in the book like carbohydrates and amyloid, some uh, some GMS, some gram, some all that good stuff when it comes to special stains and other stains that Frida Carson will be talking about. And uh, yeah, before we get into this video, do not forget to join the game comment share subscribe i love you guys and let's go ahead and get right into the video right, so if you guys watched my um introduction to um h and e hematoxylin and eosin cytoplasmic and nuclear staining then kudos to you guys for watching that video we really don't have a lot left to cover in this chapter because h and e is pretty intensive um, so I want you guys to definitely check out all those questions in the front of your book when it comes to your H&E chapter. And when it comes to the troubleshooting, I definitely, definitely always tell you guys to look at those pictures. The ASCP is definitely made up of pictures and sometimes pictures can be in black and white or sometimes whenever the picture can be straight from the Frida Carson book. So that's a good look. So they want you to be able to distinguish what is wrong with the picture based upon the troubleshooting. Whenever you do start um, your your first job at, you know, at a lab or just say you start your clinicals, a lot of things are automated whenever it comes to clinicals and whenever it comes to an automated lab, a lot of things are automated, but you may not start in an automated lab. I didn't start in an automated lab. Um, so you may have to do certain things by hand. And if you are doing the H&E stain by hand, it's very important that you learn um, when to change your hematoxylin, uh, when to filter it, um, when to change your alcohols, um, also making sure that you rotate your xylenes, rotate your alcohols. And cover slipping is also a big portion of the chapter in nuclear and cytoplasm staining. You're probably thinking like, well, Shanika, cover slipping can't be that hard. That's not true because whenever I was in school, the little things like cover slipping actually was the hardest, uh, one of the hardest things to do because you actually have this thin piece of film if you never even cover slipped the slide before. You literally have to put the right amount of um, mountain medium on the slide, maybe two drops, and then you literally have to seal the cover slip on the slide without any air bubbles, trying to learn how to get out air bubbles, coming up with different, you know, tricks to, um, you know, perfect your cover slipping, especially if you're doing it by hand. And if you just have too many air bubbles or if you have too much mountain medium, then that can cause an issue as well. So you have to learn how to soak off the the excess um, mountain medium, actually you put your slide back in and soak off the tissue. Um. Sorry, I soak off the tissue. You don't want to soak off the tissue. Put your slide in some xylene and soak off the cover slip so you can recover slip that slide. And that's happened to many of us as histotechs. We have definitely have had to recover slip things. And sometimes they can hold you up, but while you are soaking those slides, then you know you can go ahead and you know do the next thing. If something as small as cover slipping is definitely a big concern when it comes to air bubbles. And whenever the pathologist goes to view that slide, they definitely don't want to see a bunch of air bubbles in the cover slip and slide. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the bread and butter of H&E. It will be troubleshooting. I know you guys will probably be experiencing some troubleshooting in the lab and you will need to know what to do. But for right now, it is about the book and what Frida Carson is letting you know, hey, this is what's gonna happen because a lot of you guys may not be working in the lab right now and you may not see a lot of troubleshooting issues. So that's why it's really, really important for you to study these pictures because you will need to know book-wise what to look for when it comes to troubleshooting H&E. So that way, whenever you get into your lab career, it will be all recognizable or if you have a machine which is great it you know chances are you know things may go smoothly but if you qc that h and e and you see like you know something that doesn't look right you can always refer to your book or you'll be or you can know exactly like hey i remember that maybe you know the hematosa needs to be filtered or it needs to be changed 
um, or you know it was too much carryover whatever the case may be so for right now study these um, these troubleshooting pictures and I'm gonna let you know which pictures to study okay all right so let's go ahead and talk about troubleshooting the H&E stain incomplete deparaffinization so I'm gonna put a picture up here of incomplete deparaffinization and that's picture 6.14 the problem is caused by water left in the tissue, incomplete drying, or not leaving the slides and xylene long enough for complete deparaffinization. To prevent or correct incomplete deparaffinization, dry sections properly before beginning deparaffinization. If improper drying is the cause, slides can be treated with absolute alcohol to remove the water, then retreat with xylene to remove the paraffin. Allow sufficient time in xylene for complete deparaffinization. If this is the cause, return to xylene for a longer time. Avoid contaminated xylene. Change solution if necessary. If the slides have been stained, decolorize and restain. All right, so let's just talk about deparaffinization. Deparaffinization is normally when the slides come out the oven. So depending upon your lab, the slides are normally in the oven for 30 to 45 minutes whatever the protocol is at the lab do not forget to check out this video that i'm gonna leave right here which is new lab new tech new rules um follow the protocols you guys because that's really really important it does not matter what you've done in the last lab or how that last lab worked it only matters what the protocol is at the current lab that you're currently working at if you have some suggestions or tips to add to better that lab definitely do that talk with your lead or talk with your supervisor but you know right now it is really really important as a new histotech to follow all procedures and protocols and if something just don't seem right or you just don't have an answer to something or you know you don't know what to do or it doesn't you just still having questions always get another histotech get another lead uh, ask one of your peers it is definitely fine because they would rather for you to ask questions than to just assume things and you know she can go haywire to reel myself back in um okay so let's go ahead and talk about deparaffinization so you want to leave the slides in the oven for at least 30 minutes or whatever the time is allowed i'm just going to speak on my current lab where i currently work at now um you want to deparaffinize in three changes of xylene for four minutes each you want to make sure that the slides are thoroughly deparaffinized set you a timer deparaffinize in three changes of xylene and then you want to make sure that you know you go through your alcohols as well and everything is deparaffinized completely if your slides are not deparaffinized completely before staining then that's when you will have that haziness or white to your slides so that's a picture that you definitely want to study so the next uh h&e troubleshooting will be nuclear staining is not crisp when distinct chromatin patterns cannot be seen in the nuclei it's sometimes referred as smudgy or muddy nuclear staining the causes are varied but frequently incomplete fixation is a major contributor to this artifact other causes are too much heat during processing or drying the microscopic sections to ensure crisp nuclear staining fix tissue specimens completely dehydrate and clear tissues completely before infiltrating with paraffin do not use heat on the processor except for the paraffins do not leave tissues in melted paraffin for a prolonged period and dry microscopic slides at the correct temperature for the shortest time possible that ensures complete drying and another big tip was says fix tissue specimens properly or completely. Um, sometimes tissue may not be fixed completely, especially a lot of fatty breast tissue. In your histology career, you will see where some of your specimens will not be fixed. And you can sort of tell a specimen that isn't fixed. I wish I had something to pop up here on the screen, but it will just consist of like that um, white, like I don't want to use the word raw because it's not meat, but you could just you'll you'll be able to distinguish when tissue is overfixed or if it's really hard or if the grocer cut it too thick. Sometimes you may need to send it back to process completely. So if you are trying to cut a specimen that isn't fixed completely, number one, it probably won't even cut good. 
Um, so you definitely need to reprocess it. But if a tissue does not fit completely, it would definitely show that smudgy nuclei that they're speaking about here in the troubleshooting H&E. Okay, so another really important troubleshooting for H&E would be the pale nuclear staining. Pale nuclear staining or hematoxin that is too light or is shown in the demonstration that I'm gonna show you guys right now. It says the nuclei are too pale in the section of fallopian tube. So the contrast between the nuclei and the cytoplasm is very poor. Good nuclear staining is critical to attain a good H&E. Some of the things that may be the cause of this is not leaving the slides of hematoxin long enough, staining with over oxidized or depleted hematoxin, over differentiating the hematoxin. So just based upon this picture right here, if they show you a picture like this on your test, and or even if you just see this picture in the if you just see this in the lab just say if you're QCing you know the H&E control for that for that machine or you're QCing your H&E control because every morning let me just let me just uh go back real quick if you are doing an H&E for that day before you run the patient's tissue you will run a control period that is protocol so before you even use that stainer for the day, the H&E manual or the H&E automated stainer, or before you even do your own manual H&E, you always want to run a control. So that way you know that the control works or any tissue, patient tissue following the, um, the H&E, you know that that stain line is good to go.